Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can create a real-time application with Angular and Socket.io. As always, the full text version of this tutorial will be available on my website and I'll leave a link to this in the description below. So in the previous tutorial we looked at how you can use raw web sockets and combine that with RxJS subjects and observables in order to create a real-time application that could communicate with a WebSocket server. However, that wasn't the simplest approach I could have taken. Socket.io helps to provide a far simpler interface with sockets and is far nicer to work with when it comes to writing your own real-time applications. And one of the best things about Socket.io is that there are many ports to many different languages of this Socket.io library. So I could write a backend in Python using Socket.io and it'll be able to seamlessly connect to my front-end Angular application using the same library. So let's dive into the code. Now, in order for us to use the Socket.io client, we're going to have to install them using the Node Package Manager and we can do that by using the following commands. npm install socket.io-client and npm install at types slash socket io dash client. Now I've done I've already done this because I've got a really slow internet connection here. So let's get started coding this up. First of all we're going to need a WebSocket service much like the one we had in the previous WebSocket tutorial. And in order to do that we're going to use the Angular CLI and generate a service called WebSocket service and the command can be found here. So ng G, service and WebSocket, and that'll create the two necessary files. Coming into our WebSocket service.ts file, we're going to want to do the following. So import star as IO from socket.io client. And we're going to also want to import observable from rxjs slash observable. And import star as rx from rxjs slash rx and finally import environment from environments slash environment. Perfect. So coming into our WebSocket service class, we're going to want to do the following. So private socket and this will be the socket that connects to our socket IO server that we're going to be defining later on. Next we want to define our connect method. So this is going to take in nothing and it's going to return an rx.subject much like our previous tutorial did. And within this we're going to want to do the following. So this.socket equals IO environment dot WebSocket underscore URL and we'll define this soon. Next we're going to want to do is define both an observable and an observer which will then combine to create an RxJS subject. So let observable equals new observable and observer this dot socket dot on message. So every time our WebSocket receives a new message event we're going to want to pass the data from this event and we're going to want to log the fact that we've received this message. And we're also going to want to call observer.next and pass in the data. Just below this we're also going to want to do return and this.socket.disconnect just to tidy things up. Below where we've defined our observable, we're going to want to define our observer. So let observer equal, and we're going to define its next function. So data of type object, and this dot socket dot emit message, and we're going to stringify the data that's passed in here. Perfect. Now what we want to do is return rx.subject.create and again we pass in both our observer and our observable. 
and that's all we need for this WebSocket service class. Now, the next thing we want to do is define our chat service. And this chat service is going to hopefully simplify the way we interact with our WebSockets. And to create our service, we're going to follow the exact same pattern as last time and call ngg service. And we're going to call this chat. Give that a second to generate the two files and then open up the chat.service.ts. Now within this, at the very top, we're going to want to do import WebSocket service from WebSocket service and import observable and subject from rxjs slash rx. Cool. The next thing we want to do is define our messages. Messages. And this will be of type subject. And we're going to pass in any here. Within our constructor, we're going to want to do private WebSocket service of type WebSocket service. And within the body of this constructor, we are going to want to do the following. So this.messages equals subject any WebSocket, WebSocket service dot connect. So we're going to connect to our WebSocket server and then map response any and any return response. Cool. And fix this wee typo. And then below this, we're going to want to define a send message function. So send message, which takes in a message of type anything. And this dot messages dot next and pass in the message. Excellent. And finally, for our front end application, we're going to want to modify our app.component.ts file. Now, within this, we're going to want to do import chat service from forward slash chat.service. And within the body of our class, we're going to want to do the following. So, constructor, which will take in private chat of type chat service. Um, Within our ng on init, we're going to then do this dot chat dot messages dot subscribe and every message we're going to want to console dot log that message like so. Below this, we're going to want to call our send message or define our send message function. And all this is going to do is this dot chat dot send message and we're going to just pass in test message like so. Now why is this complaining? We come in here and it's because I spelled constructor wrong. Perfect. That solves everything. And finally before I forget we come into our app.module and we have to define our WebSocket service and our chat service as providers. So chat service from chat.service and import WebSocket service from WebSocket.service. And within our providers array, we add both of these services. So chat service and WebSocket service. Awesome. And within our app.component.html, we'll just delete all this gunk. Our socket dot io application and we're going to create a button so this button is going to have a click function associated with it and it's going to send a message nice and simple and within the text we're going to use for this is uh, just send a message again nice and simple so when we come into our browser and we look at our application we can see our socket io application has successfully been rendered out. So we've got our full front end application up and running, but one thing we don't yet have is a back end server to connect to. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I've got a really nice and simple ExpressJS socket IO server running on my machine. And I'll leave the code for this in the text version of this tutorial. So you can definitely pull this down, 
run it locally and try it out for yourself. Um, but for now, I'm not going to explain this in too much detail, I'm just simply going to run it node main.js and the final thing we need to do in order for this to work is come into our environment file and add that websocket url variable that we neglected to set earlier and this is simply going to be http localhost and port 5000 save that and when you come back into your front end application you should see that the the page has refreshed itself and we've got no more console errors so let's test this out. Click the send message button and you should see that our application has successfully received a message from our running WebSocket server. And just to prove to you that it's running, we come back in here and we can see in the console logs that a user is connected and that it has received a message. And the method body of this message is just test message. So that's us successfully built a front end application that utilizes the socket IO library and hooked it up with a socket IO based ExpressJS server in the back end. Now, hopefully, you found this tutorial useful. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more programming tutorials. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.